And today I'll be showing you the beautiful Bifrost. And a few general updates here and there regarding my Amiga. And not to mention a brief little catch-up since a few things have indeed been happening. Now this is the first of the goodies which I'm gonna have a look at today. Uh, the beautiful Bifrost, which again I almost called freaking Bitfrost <laughs> in the intro. And uh, this one was sent, uh, there's another, this is the second one that's been sent to me uh, by the creator himself. Uh, as you can see here, it's a very personalized uh, Miss Mad Lemon. Thank you for all the contributions you are doing for the retro and Amiga scene. And here you will see, you'll find a manual. And this here is actually, oh, this is a note from, let's see. Hello, here is a brand new Bifro, Bitfro. <laughs> My frosty knows I make that mistake. <laughs> Board for your A1200. A small way for me to show my appreciation for you for you using my board and speaking fondly of it in your videos. Uh, it has a few more features upping its total combinations uh, to up over 1000. Wow! So it's obviously a new board which is done. Uh, furthermore, a big, big thanks to you, Mari, for keeping up the great work in the retro scene. We need more like you in the community. Oh, <laughs> from Sweden with love. Best wishes, Connie Fuzzy Larson. Well, Fuzzy, your bit, your bit frost, by frost, <laughs> your by frost is it, well deserving of <laughs> of any anything that I show on my channel because you know I really like it. It's just the sort of thing which I would ev have even done back then for my Amiga is do some, you know, something like this with the LEDs. As you know about fascination with view meters and lights and stuff. Okay, so let's take this out. This is the um, actual, you know, when you, when you fitted this thing, you press the LEDs with this little tool here. I think thought of everything. <laughs> so yeah, let's actually install this thing. I'm definitely going to be keeping hold of the box. I love the personalization. It's just like things like this I love. When, some, when someone personalizes something, it's just that it makes a world of difference. Okay, so just before I continue, I would like to mention last week's video. For those of you who are wondering, and of course those of you who are not on my Facebook page. I wasn't able to do a project video last week. You know, I've had relatives around and I'm unable to focus at the best of times. <laughs> so, you know, it was just, you know, so many people here, my cousins, niece and nephews. So it just, it was just quite hectic. Now I want to mention something in response to, you know, what a couple of said here and there, you not know, commented here and there, uh, with regards to my gameplay videos. I know that gameplay video is not everybody's cup of tea. You know, that's all, that's fine, I understand that. But I do know what my channel is about. I do project videos, you know, once a week, and I'm not gonna do them more frequently than that because I don't wanna burn myself out. To chill out, I will do gameplay videos during the week, as I have always have been doing, and sometimes chill out time videos at the weekend. I mean, after all, my channel is quite personal in this way. I want to share what I do, what my passions are, with the things that I love. And I also totally get that not everyone is going to like everything I do, <laughs> you know. I mean, I like quite a variety of things. I've always been that way. So anyway, let's continue with the Bifrost. So here we are, my beautiful metallic blue pride and joy. <laughs> now, if you wish to watch the um, paintwork that I did on here, uh, I've linked all the videos, you know, the series that I did that and the upgrades and everything in the description below. So let's uh, open this out. I've already unscrewed it. Because the one thing to note here when installing the Bifrost is that it is right near your floppy drive. Now, there is a chance that these pins can be shorted out by the floppy drive itself. So I would highly recommend, you know, putting some duct tape over that or any sort of insulation padding or anything like this. Like that and install the new one. This is square of duct tape. I think another layer on top of that, <laughs> just in case any of the things poke through, any of the points poke through. I'm paranoid like this. Now then, since last time when I did my mods here, I put the ribbon cable here for the external CD-ROM drive. I have, um, you know, I put the SD card extender onto the thing so you can just like 
you know, remove it for it just to come up with the tick screen, the um, kickstart boot logo, or you can just like put any, you know, OS you want on there, you know, without having to open the Amiga up. And it's just, I just, I have found this perfect. I have to say, you know, everything is so much more convenient with this. And also this and the one thing which I had removed last time thinking I'm not gonna need it but I've realized that I may actually need it as an option after you know trying to do some sound tracker stuff is the some USB keyboard interface now I have uh, done an entire episode of this <laughs> of the uh, some USB and uh, that again I will link in the description below uh, I go into way more detail about it so I just need to reinstall this again let me just, it's nice and sturdy actually. Oh, I'm not gonna get away with it. <laughs> I'm gonna have to remove the floppy drive. Okay, this one does. Okay, let's just remove this. Because let's take this out here and. So as you can see here, this is used as a cable grip, this shielding here. So if this is yoinked, you know, anything like this, it will not you know, pull the board off the IC there. As I said, if you wish to watch my, you know, some USB keyboard uh, video, then again, link is in the description below or the letter I in the corner. Now let's connect the Bifrost. Actually, I should have connected the keyboard first, but never mind. <laughs> now with the keyboard here, you have to be very careful with this. It's very delicate and so is the port. You just lift this plastic lip this top bit up to the top as far as it can go just don't pull it too much so you'll pull it off and then you slot this inside here like this make sure it goes all the way down very gently so it doesn't push down the um, plastic the top plastic part as you're you know pull, pushing it down and once it's fully in once you feel that the ribbon is fully in then it's time to push that plastic down so it locks it into place and then this should be sturdy and everything is fine. Make sure everything is good. Let's close this up again and screw it back together and we'll test the Bifrost. Now if you've been watching my videos, you will notice that I created my own PSU, my Amiga PSU, uh, with a mean well power supply and I put it inside this. Now this is, if you wish to watch this, the entire series on this, uh, again link is in the description below. Uh, just to kind of like go briefly, this is the mains power cable. This one here is the Amiga. You notice I put them all at the back because it just annoyed me that I had, you know, cables at the front. This is the, uh, this goes to the Amiga and this, I put an extra one out that goes to the CD-ROMs and this I tend to always freaking need a DC jack. So, you know, normally I kind of tape that up until I use it. Um, so yeah, it's just like, a nice power supply <laughs> in my personal opinion i think these days for the amiga this seems to be you know one of the most ideal solutions using the meanwhile psu it's just it really is just perfect anyway we'll connect this up and we'll start uh, testing the mean the uh, <laughs> bifrost <laughs> so let's now turn this on and you will see here that it is set to green and the other two are set to orange. Now I'm gonna dim the lights and bring you closer to this so you can see the details. Let's start messing around with the colors here and everything. As you can see, there's a chart here of all the colors that are available and all the um, actual effects that are available too. Right, so dimming the lights a bit. Now the bottom one, the power LED is actually the select LED. So that is to get into the uh, menu, if you wish to call it that. <clears throat> and the floppy button is the color cycling and the hard drive is the, the hard drive light is the brightness cycling. So let's press select. Now you can see the one that's flashing is the top one. We're going to change that LED color. So to change the color, you go to, you press the floppy one. So you cycle through all the colors. As you can see, it's changing. And it gradually changes through. Like in the look of those blues, <laughs> goes through a full spectrum. That's the red. 
As you can see it cycles through There's some effects here. There's different si uh, effects, cycling effects. Now that's just red. Now this is just going to go through all the colors. Now I just want it to be red and that's simple. Now I want to change the brightness of this. So I change this to, uh, I click this one. So just the brightness, click it again and it's bright. Click it again, it's brightest. And then the brightness even has effects. So that, as you can see, it will do that. It will fade around. When you press it again, then it's the dimmest. There we go. So that's fairly bright. I'm happy with that. Now let's select another, the second LED here, this one here. Now we want to change the color to this, to apple green, like the bottom one. It's like an apple-y sort of green. It just reminds me of apples. <laughs> No, I've taken it too far. It's gone into the blues. <laughs> ah, do you know what's happening? That is so bright that that's bleeding through here. Apple kind of green. Let's do the brightness a bit high on that. So now the third one. Let's find the, col the right color which I want mine to be kind of sort of a turquoisey blue. I'm just gonna think for that color. <laughs> it goes into purples now. just need to go through it once just to kind of decide which color I want. That's a nice blue. Let's do the brightness. A little on the bright side actually. Now to save this, what we need to do is just keep unselect and if you see it flashing, now keep it pressed, keep the select pressed. Once you see it flashing, that means it's saved it. So, you know, you can switch it off, switch it back on, it will keep the settings. Okay, so a bit about this, uh, the uh, later version. Let's look what it says about that. All different color and brightness settings are find and mix. For example, you might want to customize your power LED to have a color cycle with a pulsating brightness. That's perfectly fine. All in all, the Bifrost board can be customized in 3 times 30 times 6 different ways for a total of 540 unique uh, custom combinations with the new feature of inverted mods in version 1.4. This has now increased even further. Cool. So let's now just test this with a floppy disk and I'm just going to use one of my games compilation discs by the way, these are from back in the day and uh, the gameplays on these are upcoming, <laughs> you know, with my cousin Ayman and I, uh, we did a lot of recording <laughs> of gameplays. So let's just see, yay, <laughs> green. Okay, what I'm going to try and do to attempt to reduce the bleeding of uh, one light onto the other is just simply, I mean, I guess you can either, you know, put tape on that bottom bit or you can just get like a, you know, like what I'm doing here is a semi-permanent marker and just thingy it, which it doesn't even freaking fit. So I think tape will be the only, <laughs> the only way I can do this. I mean, as you can see, it's just coming from that bottom bit and if you just, you know, if it was painted black, the bottom bit, it would be much better. Just like a black coating on it would, would do. Okay, that drastically reduced the bleeding, the light bleeding on this. So what I'm going to do is just put some tape in between this one and this one, and it should be good. I mean, easier way would be to coat it with like a black marker, but really I cannot find a freaking black marker when I need it. Trust me, after I finish this video, it'll just pop up right in front of me. So be careful not to short anything while you're doing this. Or just use an insulated, you know, don't use scissors or screwdrivers or anything. I'll just switch it off and do it. I just wanted to see if it makes any effect on the bleeding or not. 
I don't know, I just love modding, you know, stuff like this, the Amiga, just like customizing things like this. I know there's a lot of people who are like dead against this sort of thing, like the Amiga should be in its original form and that's it. I mean, somebody was ridiculous as saying that once you put like an upgrade in the Amiga, it's no longer an Amiga. Come on, that is completely ridiculous. I just, you know, <laughs> I'm, it is ridiculous. But yeah, as I was saying, I like doing this sort of thing, you know, personalizing it. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You know, it's each person's choice. I mean, those who kind of, you know, yell at you and scream at you and things like this for, you know, mudding your Amiga or anything like this. I mean, come on, they need to get a grip. You don't own everybody's Amiga. You know, that's a, that's a, <laughs> that's the fact. Right, so after putting it all together, let's just test it. That's fantastic. That has drastically reduced the light bleeding. I mean, there's just like a touch of bleeding, but that's okay. You know, I can live with that. Diskin. Nice. That's definitely reduced the bleeding. So that is the beautiful Bifrost. And I have to say thanks again, Connie Larson or Fuzzy, for sending me this. And uh, I'm really happy with mine and it's just, it's really complimented my, my mud, my Amiga mud, the color and everything. And yeah, it's just, it's beautiful. So anyway, that's all for today. Thanks so much for your likes, your shares. Do leave your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to check out my other videos and do subscribe for more. So for now, I will say adios. And also for their generous donations, I would like to say a big thank you to my patrons in reverse order today. Wayne Marsh, Tina Stumcolor, Todd Gill, Thomas Muller, Thomas Presina, The Deeply Cynical, Stuart Evans, Steve Jones, Sophie Leroy, Skurdu Finson, Sam Erica Edge, Rudiger Stiedel, Roy Gilotti, Rofi Otterstein, Rob Otley, Robert Minnis, Risky Flyer, Richard Lansett, Ruben Barnett, Restless.com, Rancy, Peter Lingback, Paul Maskelin, Paul Delta, Patrick Ekman, Abraxis, Nigel, Mixtress Ray, Mindflare Mind Retro, Milika Delik, Mike Austin, Mickey Holm, Mati Immonen, Matthew Simpson, Matt Shepkar, Marek Vilskowski, Mark McDonald, Mark Morin, Maria Engelstrom, Matt Stroest, Yuka Isuatala, Just Eidi, Jim Leonard, Jeffrey Tebert, Jason Cadaver, Jan Stoltenberg Lerche, Jan Beta, James Harry, James Burr, Ian Scott, Hayes Maker, Glenn Wiorek, Jeff Major, Gav Messingham, Frederick Rampris, Frat M, Espen Galbeck, Eric Andre, El Kronskip UK, Egon Olsen, Dongan Bullock, Diorgoik, David W. Jifaris, Dave Rowland, Dan Through, Counting Virtual Sheep, Calder Fusion, Chris Sebelinski, Casual Commodore, Carsten Larvad, Kari S. Turner, Carmen Armstrong, Brad Hansen, Boris Matishin, Axel Dominator, Austin Pryor, Anthony Proctor, Andrio, Alex, Albert Hartman, Al Hunt, and Adi. If you wish to support me on Patreon, the link is in the description below, as well as links to my Patreon's websites or YouTube channels.